It doesn't fucking matter. Like, again, me and Andrew talking about nothing. All right, so uh, me and Jamal have these conversations all the time that I feel like are good conversations. Because we got a half hour to be back on uh, back on schedule training and stuff like that. And this is about the Deontay Wilder um, uh, Tyson Fury fight. Basically, anything combat we like to talk about lead up to the week and perspectives and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Jamel had Wilder. I was on the fence, but I was leaning towards Wilder because of his uh, his knockout power. You can change the course of any plan with knockout power. It's like the Mike Tyson, uh, like the Mike Tyson saying, everybody has a plan to get punched in the face. And even Tyson Fury, uh, leading up to it, talked about his power was he's he has more. Um, power than what he even expected. And then Jamel gave an incredibly interesting insight that I think someone that is a one, a large man, and two, has um, has competed at a high enough level to actually have a pretty good insight, whether it doesn't necessarily need to be boxing, but things that I think the average person, I consider myself the average person, most of you motherfuckers watching this is probably gonna be the average person as well, but to be like, oh, I never thought of that, and I don't have my own personal experience with something like that. Uh, dating back to him being in college with being a large man, having to do physical combat with somebody else. And he brought up uh, one of his, in his senior year, kind of uh, uh, dialogue. We just, so I want you to walk back, uh, walk yourself back through that. Uh, so it was 2009. Um, it was dual meet versus Central. Central was either five or seven in the country at the time. Um, they perennial um, Mid-American Conference champs. They have multiple All-Americans. Really, this is when they were real good. And uh, I was wrestling. Um, so the whole duel had been tight. It was tight all the way down. down to our 97-pounder trying got a, got a big win that it made it so a win would secure the duel. And uh, so I wrestled a guy, Ger Gerard Trice. Gerard was probably the top 10 in the country at the time. Um, he's a blue chip guy out of, out of uh, Michigan. Uh, real tough guy. I think he only had a couple losses, if that. And uh, long story short, the match, the match went to overtime, sudden victory. Um, Gerard was probably 240 at the time, 235, 240. Um, I might have been close to 280 at the time. Um, but anyway, it was um, it was a tight match, and I got to take down in overtime, and uh, everybody, you know, declares the bench and storms it. You know, it's, it was our first outright championship in a long time. I think it was over 10 years. But I got back onto the, the bus. This is the part I was telling Justin. I got back on the bus. I remember that. I can't remember if it was heel or more or both. My one of my coaches, both my coaches came back. My seat was in the back of the bus because um, I could stretch out. I remember they both came in. You know, had the dome lights and the old uh, travel buses. And clicked the dome light. I'm sitting back with my iPod. I'm like, you know, what's I'm taking in the wind? Is like that's not gonna be enough to beat him again. I remember thinking like, bro, we just are Mac champs for the first time in like. I think it was in the '90s. Oh, well, I forget what it was. Like you know, I we, we like what are you talking about? It's not gonna be enough to be him next time. And this um, is after after the win. You're on the bus after the big win, and yeah. you're on the bus. I mean, that's we how were, soon we were at Central, and I'm pretty sure they had sold out their their Mary America Com. It was a big it was a big duel, and um, we, we I mean it was hostile too. So us getting out of there was like you know it was not we weren't warmly received, but. I heard thinking like, wait a second, it's not gonna be enough. I just won. He's like, it's not gonna be enough. Um, Mac championships are in two weeks. You know, if you, you, you know, it's not gonna be enough to beat him. And their recommendation was me getting up in the mornings and having to do bike sprints. So I'd get up. Uh, so this was, I forget what day the duel was on, but whatever it was. I think we had to go back to campus. So it might have been like a Thursday night duel back in campus Friday morning. So for two weeks. I was getting up and doing extra bike sprints. And um, so and now I'm recalling. So I did have partners. So a lot of the training partners or the guys who are backups, they will come down with you and do it, you know, because it's like a brotherhood. So it's like, all right, Jamal, go in. We got to push them out. We got to push them. And a lot of guys, that was their job. Blackwell, um, Barlow were Brendan Barlow, which my two 
guys. Blackwell was what weight? Blackwell was back up 97. Yeah. But, I mean, if he wasn't wrestling, he was probably 200 something pounds. And then Barlow was. Barlow was my backup. 20. Yeah. Uh, how old was uh, Barlow was probably 230 okay. at that time in his career. 230, 235. Real tough, you know, really, really good heavyweight. And uh, those were my guys that would come in. And so I would have to wake up and do bike sprints in the morning with Hill. Yeah, Matt Hill, who's the head coach in Edinburgh right now. Towards towards the end, the point is, uh, yeah, towards, towards the end of a college wrestling season. Yeah, this is March, so this is this is uh, this is this is early March. So our first when when do you guys kick off like conditioning for wrestling? Oh, uh, first week of school. So is last week of August then? Last, well, uh, yeah, maybe first week of September officially we start off okay. the conditioning probably. In October, it's like you got to get your weight down. Probably mid October, we're going to we start our competition season, and then you go all the way to March. So you've been actively oh, yeah, I, conditioning I, and whatnot. I, I, September, I, I, October. I upset the number four kid in January, number four kid in country. So I've wrestled big matches at this time. <laughs> uh, like at this point, I have literally wrestled some of the best guys in the country already. And the thing was, if you want to, because I was a four time Mac, three time Mac finalist up until that point. This is my fourth time going in. So I, I made the finals as a freshman, sophomore, and junior, and I had always come in second. So I was a three-time runner-up. I just would have been there. Like, it's not going to be enough if you want to come. But they were, they were right. So I had to get up, do bike sprints. Along with our normal workload, we'd lift. Um, so I think I was doing bike sprints on the days we weren't lifting. So if we had morning lift, then that was one thing. But for practice, instead of me going – with a just regular match as far as like our live goes, um, they would rotate in fresh guys on me each pair. So period one, I would start with Barlow. Period two, I'd have Blackwell. Period three, I'd have you know whoever else was. We had a couple other big guys in the room, and they would rotate. So I, I always, I always got a fresh guy. I remember Jimmy coming over one time, <laughs> and Jimmy saying to them before he started. And I'm in the center, so I'm in the center of the of the of the, of the Shark ring. Bait, yeah, yeah, and, you know, I was sitting on the mat, and and uh, that he came over to him. He said a lot of her hair. He said, "Don't let him breathe." He pointed to me, like, "Don't let him breathe." And I, st- I remember smirking, like I laughed, I chuckled, like I'm like, <laughs> but for me that was always a chuckle. I like that. I'm like, come on, come on, motherfucker, bring it on. You know, for me that was always that was always fun because in my mind, I, you know, this this. This corner, this is my area. You know, you're, yeah. no, I'm the big dog over here. So I remember that, and that would be. And then here's the kicker. This is where the uh, I told Justin years ago. I don't ever recall really you losing the overtime match. That's probably why. So after I would do all that, we'd have conditioning, and you know, so bike sprint, lift, <laughs> wrestling practice, shark yeah. bait, and then afterwards yeah, we go. And uh, so we'd run, we run sprints. And Jimmy figured out how to time them up. So he would, you know, so you got guys that's one twenty five up to everyone. So he knows how long it's going to take. And unlike football, there is no separation of like bigs, medium, and small. Everybody's running the same, same, same amount. It's the same amount. It don't, it don't, it don't, it don't, it don't matter how much you weigh. So I remember they would just throw out these obscure number of sprints in, in, uh, in times. I remember thinking. And you could tell when they were trying to fuck with me. And fuck with me in the productive way of like, what's he gonna do? Is he gonna break or is he gonna is he or is he gonna is he gonna be a challenge? And it'd be like something they would rock you to sleep with like, all right, set of three or a set of two. You know, all right, I could we could do that. I can kinda game that a little bit. I kinda I know how many steps it takes. And then like you got a set of six. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then he put time on it. And then Set of six in this time, or set of whatever in this time, and if Porter doesn't get it, we're all running again. And my hands are on my knees, where they typically were for a lot of time. <laughs> and, uh, and I would look over at him, because it went from light light guys on the one end, and then it went all the way up to the big guys were on the other end. And I would shoot over and look at him, I'm like, this motherfucker right here. And... Um, so then that was early test because a lot of guys were just breaking, you know, say it's unfair, you're picking on me, da, 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 and they would leave or they'd fucking, but I always looked at it as a challenge because like I saw him earlier, like, I want you, yeah, I am exactly who you thought I was. I am, I am that dude. Who you thought I was. So I'd run the six and it'd be great, it'd be jubilation, and then he said, you got one more. <laughs> like, and the, so at this point, I probably took a knee at this point 
And it's just like, and you get, so that's the part of the camaraderie because then you got your guys are like, all right, hey, man, come get up. We got to do it again. We got to do it again. And, like, you don't even hear that anymore. It's just like, now it's a personal vendetta. Now, okay, now you're fucking with me. Yeah. But it's okay. I'm not going to give you a satisfaction to be. So I did all that for two weeks, long so short. That sort of grueling mini camp inside of the season. And I go to Max, like, and I just, it wasn't even close. It was, I, I, I. I beat him like 10 something, 10 3, 10 4. There was something like he only points he scored was me letting him go. That was it. And just inside of two weeks, it was a tale of barely win and then having to go through uh, a two week intense camp into major decision in him two weeks later. And yeah. uh, and uh, that was two different, two tail. But yeah, I had to, I remember that little bit. He said it wasn't enough. It wasn't going to be enough to beat him. And he was right. If I'd have came in just done. My normal shit, I probably would have, you know, it, it, I, I can't say I would have lost, but it would have wouldn't have been the wouldn't have ran through him. Yeah, I wouldn't. It, it wouldn't have been the one sided match. It was. It would, you know, it, it could have could have took it overtime again. And, and, but I know the difference was I was just I just felt I felt. So it, even even you said on the elevator, I don't remember the dude's name. Oh yeah. It? So then we go. We go to uh, NCAA's, which is uh, two weeks after that. So this is close to the end of March. This is like March, last two weeks of March. Oh, yeah. And um, so uh, we were leaving the uh, the arena. We got to the hotel. So all of the teams stay in the same hotel. And uh, we just had to catch the elevator with the head coach and the assistant coach. It was me and one of the one of the assistants in there too. And we just, I mean, we're not at this point. We're not we're not running into each other. And in the bracket, you know, I think I'm, I think that, side, yeah, I think yeah. that night I'm wrestling the semi, so it's during the day, so I haven't, so I wrestle the quarters, and he's somewhere else, and um, they go, man, I just want to tell you something. You really, you really kicked his ass the second time, you know, talking about um, Trice, uh, George Trice, and like you know, you just double him, you know, all over the place. It's like we didn't, we didn't expect that. And then the biggest thing was we didn't, we didn't expect you to come out. And do that. We said we figured we were just gonna wear you down and gas you out, and that was their plan. Their plan was to wear me down as a larger athlete, athlete, and gas me out. And uh, I remember that, like, but we didn't. We didn't expect you to come in, you know, and double leg him all over the mat. That's what they said. Double leg him all over the mat like that. And I was just like, I was just like, oh well, you know, I guess, I guess, you know, old Matt or Hill and uh, Josh, what they're talking about. But there was, it was that. The first match was that evident as far as like he had he. He got beat because I was just, I got in and I was strong enough to ride and take that all the way down, and that's how, but he wasn't gassed, he wasn't even tired. And the second match, it was just like, he was like, he was like, I can't, I got no, I got no answer for yeah. for, for this. And I think that was just the tale of two mini conditioning bouts. Uh, and uh, and in the, to, to put it, but to bring it back into context, it was, so from Jamel picking Wilder, he <laughs> posed that. I just assumed you were going to fucking condition and get better. <laughs> like, because yeah. so because of, like, Jamal was saying, from my perspective, like, oh, if uh, if something went negative this way, what I'm going to do is bring up my weaknesses and then fucking get better. <laughs> so, like, that's that's where the topic spawned from. But actually to have, like, a an actual, an actual account of being, like, I know... The difference between large man, small man. I've done the physical combat. I've done the the rematch, so to speak. Thing. It's just interesting. I don't think like a lot of people actually get to have a personal account, or at least to have. I mean, we can watch something else on YouTube or something like that and try to get a personal account. But a personal account of being like, yeah, these motherfuckers tried to kill me. Hey, I didn't even lose. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't lose. I, yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't responding to <laughs> avenging and loss. I didn't even lose, but. I had to. I had never won a Mac title at that point, so it was like you. You don't have your tools. You have right now might not be sufficient to do it. If you want to win a title and then you know get seated, you know top five in NCAA's the following. Like you don't have. Like you might. You don't have it right now. Like I didn't lose. It's just like you were looking at a matchup. Like you could lose if you don't. If you bring. If you bring this same guy again, you could. You could lose. You have to bring somebody better than what you just showed. You know, I think and, the uh, one point that that it's how the conversation like kicked off is just like you know said, you know Deontay doesn't have a traditional sport background, whether it be ball sport, but traditional coach, 
like athlete inside of a team setting background in which uh, I forget how the way you uh, you worded it, but like against your will, someone's telling you to do something. Like in boxing, you can kind of like. Yeah, I, I, his 42 wins or whatever he's got. I mean, he's got enough money to probably dictate who yeah, comes in this game. He didn't start in the traditional, like, you learn as a kid, like, coaches, you just, you, you get the kids who are defiant against the coach, and we already know what those kids look like, but you got the coach. Like, I feel like I was a coachable guy. Like, you tell me to do it, I'm going to do it. I might not like it, but I'm going to yeah. do it. And then hopefully the greater good, like, I don't think he had that sort of experience. So yeah. now boxing, somebody telling him, like, yo, you got to put in, 15 miles this week on a rover. I mean, that's not a substantial. Rover, that's not a yeah. That's three miles for five days. Yeah. You got to go run three miles five days. Like for him to be like, nah, I'm not too. I think I know better. Uh, that's probably yeah, what he like didn't have. I know like, my body just, type shit. It's yeah. a it's an obligation. I did a lot of stuff I didn't want to do, but but yeah. but, but yeah. it made me better. I'm glad I did it because I wouldn't have made myself do it. But but understanding as a necessary component. And I think that's the thing when you have that in traditional sports, whatever the sport is. Uh, you like you, you? It's not a question. You go through and you do it, and that's a part of it. Like you don't avoid those things. You go, you go through and do it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the, the build up to the to the fight, from our perspective, is like, man, if he just does what you think he's gonna, what he's supposed to do, this could be a really good fight. Opposed to you getting your ass. Yeah, beat. it shouldn't be as shouldn't be this fight that it turned out to be. It should be like, okay, you have a guy who would or say he's in shape because that. Why, why would you not make sure you're Looking lean and shit like that and does all, not mean you're in shape. It yeah, just, that's the biggest thing. Yeah, it just means you're... Just, I figured bringing up the skill was your biggest focus. Is, you know, if you're... Because if you're, if you're in shape, then your skill level is never going to really drop off because, you know, you have a gas tank to be able to... to practice just, your skill, yeah. Didn't didn't know he just didn't do any cardio, you know. Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of one of those things. I don't know. I just thought it was an interesting story. 